Um, okay. Have you have you taken the assessment from the lecture on the lecture site? Module site? Uh, yes, I did them last night. But it doesn't come with answers, so I got one wrong in part two and I don't know which one. Okay, no, it's fine. We will we will look at them just now. Oh gosh. I'm trying to log into my Unison. Let me just see maybe I can download. And others, have you done the assessment? Yes, ma'am, I've done the assessment too. I okay. found um, part two easier than part one. But like the lady said, uh, there's no answers, so um, I don't really know where I went wrong. My my Unisa is taking longer. To Mine as well. I'm struggling to to even get the um those blocks where you log in. Yeah, it's the same thing on my side. Um, I think I did download the exercise. The thing is with this exercises, uh, you will notice okay. that I might not have the same answers as you or the same questions as you have because every student gets different um, exercises to do. Uh, so, but we will work through the ones I have. Mustn't <laughs> uh, do this today. Part, part one and part two, yeah. <clears throat> So we will work through the ones I have. So we can start with part one. Uh, I also need to open the tutorial letter 101. So the other thing you need to, your lecture has already sent you lots um, for um, during the past week. Uh, he has been sending new communication regarding the exam. So the last one was the, uh, the guideline in terms of what procedure you need to follow in order to take the exam, where you will find your exam. Um, and uh, what he also wants us to relate to you guys is that, oh, I've been telling you that the exam will always be, um, that all students will get different exam papers, even though the structure of the exam is the same, so it follows your chapters. So it first comes from study unit one until study unit 11. And we've done a, a trial mock-up assessments, many of them in the past. So it follows the same. So you writing out of 25 questions, it's an hour, an hour per section. So what happens is once you open the exam paper, I uh, want to open part, part one. Let's say you start with, with section one first. Once you open it, you have an hour to finish it. <clears throat> And then what I will suggest as well is since it is time based, so once you start with section one, take a break after you completed, you submitted your one hour is done. Take a break of 30 minutes or so to get a breather um, and then come back and do section two or collect your thoughts again and then uh, start with section two. Don't start immediately with section two after section one has finished. So the exam will be open until three o'clock. So you, you still have enough time. The other thing is because at the beginning, when you start with the exam, everybody wants to go in. There are thousands and thousands of students who are registered for um, 16 10. So what will happen is all of you, you will want to start the exam at the same time. You can pace yourself. You don't have to start immediately at exactly, exactly, exactly uh, o'clock, 11 o'clock, you can give yourself time, but you need to log in on to try and see if you can log in into the system um, from 11 until 12 o'clock, and then by 12 o'clock, start with your exam. 
or you can start immediately with the exam if you don't have any challenges. So don't panic because I know that the minute you start with the exam and say it's 11 o'clock and you start panicking when the, the uh, my exam doesn't come up, the exam paper, you can't see it, all those things. Don't panic. You will eventually write because the exam is extended until three o'clock in that afternoon. So you still have ample time to take any of the two sections, but make sure that you pace yourself. An hour online is not easy. So uh, start with section with with part one first. Make sure that you complete that because also when you are writing the exam, you don't have the. Uh, I'm I'm not sure on the assessment does it allow you to go back. So you, you won't be going back. So you need to make sure that whatever you, you answer at that point, you are sure that that is the correct answer that you have. When it comes to um, sections where you will require the tables, I will suggest that you also immediately before you even start with your exam, open up your tutorial letter 101, scroll to the back of your exam paper until you get to the tables and leave it open at, uh, uh, from that point where the table start. Because when you start writing the exam, especially when you go to sec uh, section two, which will start with uh, study unit six, when you get there, uh, you need to make sure that your tables are open because it start with normal distribution. You will require, oh sorry, from section one, when you get to the uh, discrete probabilities, when you start with the binomial and poison, you need to have the tables open so that you don't waste time going to find resources. Also, the other thing is make sure that you have your cheat sheet formula. Uh, I, I'm going to call it a cheat sheet formula uh, bank next to you already with chapters relating to every like you have chapters and formulas that relates to those sections. Uh, because this is just an open book, even though it, you should treat it as a, an exam, but and you must use the opportunities that are given to you as well. Because some exams they had they were proctored, so it means you cannot use additional material to support you to write the exam. For now, you can use that because they are available. But if you feel you don't want to use that and you want to remain integ uh, your to see how much you know about that, you don't have to have that cheat sheet next to you with formulas uh, that will help you write the exam better. Because anyway, if you were going to sit in the exam in a venue, you were going to be given the formulas and the tables to use. So it, it still works out the best for you to at least have all the formulas because in the exam, they don't give you all the formulas as well. So use those opportunities as well. And lastly, um, yeah, lastly is take a breather. Don't leave your phone, don't look at it, don't do anything. Make sure that you trade on doing your exam because the chances are the more distracted you are with the phone, the time will be running. It, it, it moves fast, it moves quickly. So leave your phone somewhere or switch it off and put, turn it down so that you remove all the distractions that might happen while you're taking the exam. And that's the only thing I have for you. And then we can start. Um, I wanted to also open the, sorry, I haven't opened it as yet. Let me share uh, my screen. Okay, so this was part one, I hope so. And this is part one, and we can go through them one by one. But before I do that, I need to also open the tutorial letter 101, which has tables. So those who haven't taken the, uh, the online assessment, I will add you go practice. It's not about getting the answers right or wrong. It's just 
um, yes. they are there to help you see the structure of your exam and make you feel comfortable when you start writing the exam. I know the practice sessions are two hours long per, sec per section. Um, so you can also time yourself. So you can do it the first time and see how long it takes you and do the second time and see how long it takes you to answer only one part. And the, the practice ex uh, assessment, they had 11 questions, 11 questions, which were 22 questions overall which will not be the case. In the normal exam, you are writing out of 25 questions. So it might be 12 questions for the first section and 18 section for the uh, next section, or it might be 14 section for the next. I don't know how it looks. I don't know how your exam looks, but all I know is the structure of your exam follows your, uh, your study unit. So this is tutorial letter 101. I just want to scroll to the table so that when we start using tables, I know that I have them ready there. So we can start with uh, section one. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume because we only have two hours. I'm going to assume we can extend it with an additional 30 minutes so we can finish at half past four. I, I, I don't have any hurry um, today. Um, and I assume that everybody who's here has at least tried this assessment. And because you also didn't receive, uh, let's say, what you call that, uh, answers. I'm not sure if they did, did they tell you that um, question one is incorrect or, or correct? Did you find those um, or not? You only get your, your scores that says you got 22 or you got 44 or something like that. You only find your score, ma'am. Yes, you only, sorry. You only find your scores. They don't give you the answers. Oh, I see, I see. Um, okay, so there is no need. I can just tell, I give you all the answers for all the questions. You can also go back and look at your questions as well, because remember, like I said, every student would have received a some some sort of a different question at some point uh, but there will be those questions that are common that everybody will receive and then there will be those questions that everybody uh, some people might not receive it in that way so for example i think this one is one of those common one everybody should have received this kind of a question but i am not sure i don't know how your exam looked like so also remember that the structure also, I can also take you through the structure quickly. So you will remember that the structure for questions will always be two, two questions per chapter or one question, uh, uh, yes, two questions per chapter because you're writing out of 25. So it will be two questions per chapter. And for some instances with exceptions, there will be three questions per chapter. So, <clears throat> You must uh, always remember that because if you know what chapter you're dealing with, you will know what questions and what to look out for. So we can start with question number one and move because then we can move swiftly and quickly. And I'm assuming, um, or I cannot assume because you don't have your tutorial, your um, assessments with you. Uh, so we can look at question, let's, let's do it this way. We'll look at question by question, um, but I'm scared that we might not finish because two hours, if we go through every question by question, we might not get it right. So if we look at the first question that was asked, it asked which one is, and they give you the statement about the COVID-19, and then they ask you. So because this is chapter one, we know chapter one we deal with, what the uh, what the statistics? What are the types of variables? What are the levels of measurement? What is the population? What is a, um, a a sample statistics? And what are the branches of statistics? You need to know all those things. So if you read through this question, you can see that it talks about types of variables, um, and we know that we have two types of variables, and we have four types of levels of um, measurement, and we know that. Uh, the two variables, qualitative, quantitative. One is numerical, so quantitative is numerical, 
and when it's numerical, it can be counted or it can be observed, and when it's counted, it is continuous, and when it is um, uh, when it's measured, sorry, when it's measured, it's continuous, and when it's counted, it is discrete. And we also know that we have a categorical variable which has the category, uh, uh, categories. And uh, out of those, we can then find the levels of measurement. Remember the four levels of measurement, no, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal and ordinal are for categorical variable. Ratio and interval are for numerical variable. Uh, for the numerical variable. And we know that uh, nominal variables, <clears throat> uh, nominal variables are, uh, are variables that you can put into uh, categories, but there is no order. So it means uh, and no rank to them. And we also know that we have the we have ordinal variables, which are variables that can be placed in order or they've got rank. Then we have also <clears throat> we have what we call interval and uh, interval and ratio. And we know both of them are they come from uh, numerical variables where with <clears throat> where with uh, interval uh, variables we know that they uh, they uh, there is no zero and with ratio there is true meaning of zero so looking at that not going to go into too much detail the first Question was asking is the uh, number A, is this a qualitative nominal variable? Number two is asking is this a quantitative discrete variable? Is this a qualitative nominal variable? Is this a continuous variable? And this is it a qualitative nominal variable? So which one would you? Uh, Which one is incorrect? The symptoms, if they are in these categories, since they are already placed in categories, we know that those are qualitative variables. Is there rank or order in those variables? Mm -mm. No. There is no rank in that variable, so therefore it means there should be a nominal variable. So this is correct, So, but we're looking for the incorrect one. Then you move to the next statement. The next statement says here yeah, we're talking about the number. Is the number qualitative or quantitative? No, the answer is, oh, oh, you know what? Um, on my side, I've got the exact same question, but it said which one of the following statements is correct? Yes, remember that's what I said. Sorry, yes. um, that's okay. what I said. You are going to receive different questions. It's the same uh, question. So, but this one says correct. Oh wow! Yes, okay. so mine yes. is correct. So now, based on the one that we have right now in front of us, that everybody have, we're going to work through this one. So, but you will have. Uh, um, remember now. Wait, sorry. Let me also back backtrack. Remember here, I'm giving you the skill on identifying which regardless of the question that you are given, how will you know which way, uh, which answer you need to choose? Is by I'm interrogating not. every statement. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm giving you hints on how to save time as well in interrogating those statements. So you can see that I'm not reading all, the whole statement. So I'm highlighting, uh, I'm highlighting only key, uh, key issues here that will guide me in terms of answering the question. So the first thing is to look at what the question is saying. Look at what kind of answers I need to be getting from each statement. And then start interrogating what do you have in that? Because the minute you see the options that you have, it tells you 
What kind of question is that? Then when you start looking at the key things from the question, you can link the key issues to the statements and find the correct answer. So number two is asking the number is the number qualitative or, or quanti qualitative? And these are the things that you're going to ask yourself in your mind. Because it's a number, it means it's a quali quantitative variable. Quantitative. Mm. And since it is number, so therefore it's going to be counted. And when it's counted, we say it is discrete. Okay. So we know that number A and B are correct. Now we're looking for number C. C says, uh, name, uh, we know that it's a qualitative nominal, so let's look at this. So it has name or list of provinces. Is this qualitative or quantitative? It's qualitative. It's qualitative, so it means this is correct. A name or list of provinces, is it in order? There is, is there a rank or no rank? And if there is a rank, it's ordinal. And if there is no rank, it's nominal. Is this a nominal or ordinal? It's a nominal. It's nominal. So this is also correct. Then we move to the next question. Medical cost of each patient in rent. In rent. Is this a qualitative or quantitative? It's it quantitative. Numerical? It's quantitative. Remember, guys, I'm not only talking to one person. I am talking to everybody. At this point, everybody should have their mics unmuted if they don't have any noise. But you are all allowed to talk. Uh, it is quantitative. And <clears throat> is this continuous or discrete? Now, here is the catch. Okay. Because of this extension in rent, if it was only cost, if they just said a cost of patient, of each patient, that would have been this one I'm giving it to you because I need to explain this. If they only uh, mentioned the cost of each patient, the question would have made uh, would have been a continuous variable. Mm. or not because yeah okay i'm going to change it back because of the cost and the cost is in rent in this statement usually if they for example sometimes i'm going to say this it's not always the case sometimes a continuous variable can be converted to a discrete variable to a counted variable but not in this instance. So in this instance, you can just ignore the rent because also with the rent, it's still, the money will still always, money is always in decimal. Even though it says to rent, it will still be dot zero zero. It will still be a continuous variable. But there are measures sometimes where they will tell you that this is a continuous but they will add other things. For example, if they say days, uh, how many years, or a age, let, let's take age, for example, age. Mm. Age is always going to be a continuous variable because we always count it. But, so we're always going to measure it in terms of days, seconds, minutes, and all that. But if they say days in, in, in years, remember now, when it's in years, you cannot measure them again. You can count them because years can be counted. But when it comes to prices, you uh, uh, prices will always remain in 
a decimal point, even though it's always going to, even though you write it to the nearest rent, but there's always going to be a decimal for cents, and those cents will be equivalent to zero zero. And that is why this question will be continuous. You need to be very careful when you answer questions. You need to also interrogate that is it can it convert from a continuous to a discrete variable. So this is continuous variable. I just wanted to make sure that you understand that concept, those concepts. Numbers E, they ask, they give in the severity and they give you as mild, moderate, and severe. And here they give giving you um, the highest, the lowest, and uh, the, mid, the middle. So is this a qualitative or quantitative? And it's in the order form. And it is in order, so it should be ordinary. And that's how you will answer the questions in the exam. So moving on to the next question. The next question they gave you. Any question before we move to the next question? The next question uh, it means I'm going to make it smaller. The next uh, question. I have the, same, I have the same question on my side. Um, yes, and it's asking for the incorrect. Some people might get the one that says which one of this is correct. And you might also, you will get the same table. So all of you will get the same table. Yeah, that's right. The only thing that might be different, yes, the other thing that might be different will be the incorrect or correct, and the statements might be correct, might be different. So you might get a different statement to this. They all look the so same, yeah. they just in a different order. Yes, okay. So yeah, they're asking which one is the incorrect one. So you see, the reason why I said um, you must stay away from the WhatsApp and all that is because you're going to get confused because people on WhatsApp will start uh, giving each other answers, but it might not be the right answer for your question that you received in your exam. Um, you will get this, you are writing the same exam, but the options might be different and the questioning might also be different. So be very, very careful because they try to avoid what happened in um, in uh, semester one where everybody was sharing answers. So yeah, they made it, they made sure that you need to be sure that you get getting your own individual questions and there are no copying or plagiarism happening on the exam paper, on the exam. So, here they give you a frequency table and they're asking you statements. The first thing they're asking you is percentage of Mpumalanga. So you don't have to go ahead and create a, a um, percentages for all of them and, and, and you only going to answer, concentrate on what statement they have given you. So here they're asking you percentage from Mpumalanga. So you're going to take Mpumalanga and you're going to divide by that thing. What answer do you get? 4.5, 4. 4.6. 0, 0. 0.46. 4.6. 4, 6. 0. 0.46, so that is correct. Then they're asking you what is the relative frequency? So wait, whoa, wait. Uh, percentage, you remember, is that divide by that, multiply by 100. So you will say 71 divided by 15, 5, 1, 5, multiply by 100. That is the percentage. A relative frequency is the same thing. So if they would have asked for a relative frequency, you would have just, just done 71 divided by that. It will be in decimal. So relative frequency is a decimal point. So yeah, we need to calculate relative frequency for Eastern Cape. So you go to Eastern Cape and divide Eastern Cape by one uh, fifteen thousand five hundred. 
do you get the same answer? So this should be 19. And the answer you see in front of you will be the answer for relative frequency for Eastern Cape. Yes, what I got it. Get? 0 0.12. And that's the yeah. relative frequency. Um, and then you go to C. They're asking the frequency of Northwest. So frequency is the actual number that they will have given you. So what is the frequency of Northwest? You go to yes. Northwest and you look at the frequency and it says it's 70. Is it correct? That is not yes. correct. Once you get your answer that you are looking for, you move forward. Don't say, I, I need to make sure that all the statements are correct. No, we have our answer. Then we can move forward. Then we move forward to the next question. And our next question, which is three. Mm -hmm. And yeah, oh sorry. I need to fast. I don't want to show you all the answers. Okay, here they give you what is this? Who can tell me what are we looking at here? And this is uh, question number two and question number three are from chapter three. Chapter is what is this? Center Oh, yeah, but what do you call leaf. this? It's the stem, stem and leaf, leaf plot. Yes. Stem so they give you the stem and leaf plot and they will ask you questions relating to chapter three and chapter two. So this is chapter and you need two in terms of the stem and leaf plot. But if you look at the question, they are asking you things from chapter three or study unit three, which is measures of central tendencies and measures of central location and all that. So now, based on this information that you have, remember how to read the stem and leaf. The number there in front is 31. The second one is 43 and so forth. You need to read it in that way so that when you do the calculations, you calculate it right. So the first question they ask you, the dist oh, we need to look for the incorrect and remember, once you get the answer, you need to make sure that you move to the next question. So here they're asking you questions about the shape of the distribution. So this is the shape. You need to always remember that for a normal distribution, it looks like a belly shaped curve. For a left skewed, I don't know how to drop. It will look like this. And for the right skewed, it will look like that. So this we call it a symmetric. Symmetric. This we call it left skewed. Or negatively skewed. Or negatively skewed. And this we say it is right skewed. Right skewed or positively skewed. Or positively skewed. So if you look at these three graphs and you look at this information, is this symmetric or normally distributed? Or we can call it normally. It's not, it's not symmetric. It is not symmetric. So therefore, we're looking for the incorrect one. And therefore, this is the incorrect one that we're looking for. Uh, you, let's say your question was asking you for the correct one. So you will continue and look for the correct one. So you need to be sure how to calculate the mean. The mean is mm. the sum of all of them. So you will add the 1 plus 43 plus 63 plus 70 plus 80 plus 89 plus 96 and divide by how many they are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Divide by 7. That should give you the mean. The mode, it's the number that appears more than the other numbers, not the number that appears 
uh, not the highest number. So is this question, does it have a number that appears more than the others? No, there is not. So therefore, this you can check the answer from by looking at the table. The range, remember the range? So if I write here, the mean is the sum of all of them divided by n. The range will be your highest the value minus your lowest value. The so you will take 96 and subtract 81. That will give you your range. And then the median the is median. the middle value. The value. Remember the middle value, we can find the position by saying n plus 1 divided by 2 will give us the position of the median. Right. Uh, we were on 3, we go to 4. So on 4, also it's a stem and leaf plot. Yeah, they're asking you the measures of uh, variation. They're asking you about the quartile, interquartiles, and all that. Remember the quartiles? N plus one divided by four. Position. These are the positions. Positions. Quartile two. N plus one divided by two. To find the second position. The quartile position two. The third one is the third quarter, which is three n plus three times n plus one divided by four. You use this to find the position and you go find the quartiles. The data is already ordered from lowest to highest. Uh, you can just use this to count them. Then the other thing, remember, if it's 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.25. We round it off, we round it, sorry, we round it down. If it's 0 0.75 or if it's 0 0.75, let me not say 0. Point, if it's 0 0.75, we round it up. We round it up. And if it's 0 0.5, if any of this position takes up any of this number, the values like this, then we take the average of the two values. So, I'm calculating quartal one. There are seven. If I recount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there are seven. So, quartal one will be n one plus n plus one divided by four will be seven plus one divided by four. And they are looking for the position. So, is that the answer? Is it correct? It's correct. Yes. Because that will be 8 divided by 4, yes. which is 2. Mm. Interquartile range. So when they ask for interquartile range, oh, that's the other thing that I didn't say, they need the value of quartile 3 minus the value of quartile 2. Oh, wow. Since um, what Not I was one. Uh, sorry, quartile 1, yes, sorry. Uh, since we're looking at value of quartile one and value of quartile three, yes, Ms. Wait, uh, so questions E, D, and C, they're asking you those questions. So I think we can go to question uh, C and see if C is correct. So C is asking first quarter, we've calculated uh, the quartile position. So we go and find the quartile value. So your quartile value is on position two. So you one, two. It's 43. 43. So this is correct. So already we have 43. And we need to go find position for third quarter. Third quarter is three times n plus one divide by four. Three times eight. Divide by four because I'm just taking seven plus one. And this is calculation. Where are we? Uh, 
head should be six. Uh, is it six? So that is the position. Now we go count one, two, three, four, five, six is 89. Is that 89? Oh, so that is correct. So the value of set quartan is 89. Because you that one, two, three, four, five, six. And when we read it, we also input eight and nine. So that is the correct one. Therefore, you can just substitute 89 minus 43. Is it equals to four? 46. It's 46. So therefore, it means B is the incorrect one. Yeah. So you will see that some of the questions in the exam it will take you longer. Some of them will take you short time. So you will need to look at the questions in totality in, in, so that we don't waste a lot of your time as well. Okay. Okay. So the next question. Before we move to the next question, any question, anybody, are you lost? Are you here? Because we have so many people online, but I only talk to three or four people. Uh, I, I just want you to clear me, yeah? Yes. Uh, when it comes to interquartile range, Yes. Uh, which which figure must we use? Must we use the first figure on the first quarter, on the third quarter, and then use the last figure on the first quarter? No, you use the value. So, what do you mean, the first one on the first quarter and the last one on, no, the, on the first third, quarter? No, uh, the the first value on the third quarter, and then. Uh, the uh, the last value on the first uh, quarter to I get the inter quarter to get the inter quarter range. You use the actual values like the the last. Remember, okay. Let let me put it this way. Remember, this mm. is a stem and leaf, leaf plot. We can write this as 31, 43, 63. You can unpack it so that it looks like this. Yes. 70. Eight zero, eight nine, and nine six. One two three four five six seven. You can write it out like this. The yes. first part, which is the position, by using this gives you the position. It gives you the chance to go and count how many. Where must you be to find the actual value of your quarter? So, okay. for example, this was on position two, so we know that this is quarter one, because one two is the position. But the actual value of the quartile is 43, which is 43. the quartile one value. Okay. So if we go to the third one, which is the third quarter, we also go and find the position, which is on position six. It's just to help us count the value. One, two, okay. three, four, five, six, where it stops. And we'll say this is our quarter three. three. We take the value that locate, that we find on position six. Okay. So I, that is why I don't understand your question by saying which one do we take, the first one or the second one? On the no, stem and leaf, to... when you count these numbers, so because mm. this is in order from highest to lowest, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six. That will be okay. six. But we know that we don't take only nine. We also need to include the uh, stem, which is eight. Okay. 89. Okay, I'm clear now. Okay. Yes. This is also a stem and leaf, and here yeah, they're asking you to calculate the coefficient of variation. Now, Remember your calculators. So here is where you can also save time by using your state mode calculators. You can do that because calculating the standard deviation, 
uh, because this is, uh, let's look at this. This is a sample, so we can use the sample standard deviation. So calculating the sample standard deviation, which is the sum of your observation minus the mean squared divided by n minus one, it will take you forever to calculate mm. because your coefficient of variation is equal to your sample standard deviation divided by your sample mean multiplied by 100. Remember that is the formula. So to calculate mm -hmm. this might take you longer and to calculate the mean might take you longer. So what you will do is you go to your calculator and do the step mode. Different calculators, we did this. Go look at the steps that we used when we did this chapter three, mm -hmm. chapter three. when we used uh, the calculator. Calculate okay. measures of S of variation. Somebody's mic is doing an echo. So I am going to use my calculator and give you the answers, but you will need to go and do your your uh, use your calculator to do the measures of central location. So, those who are using the sharp calculator, you go say second function mode and uh, sorry, you go and do your mode and you press one for your state one and you press zero for state zero. And your calculator will say state zero and then you start capturing your data. You will use the M plus. This is those who are using the sharp scientific calculator or the sharp business financial calculator. On the business financial calculator, you will use an E and T. Those who are using the sharp financial, uh, the sharp scientific calculator, you will use the M plus. So you will start by saying 31 M plus or E and T. And it will say data set one. And you go 43 E and T or M plus. And it will say data set two. And you continue to capture all the values until you've captured all of them. And it will say data set eight. Uh, sorry, data set seven. And then when you have that, you press the on and off your calculator. And you are ready to calculate your standard deviation. Remember? Your standard deviation and your mean are written in green and they are on button number four and button number five. This is those who are using the sharp scientific calculator or the sharp business financial calculator. So you press alpha and you press the five button and say divide by alpha and you will press the button number four and press equal and it will give you the answer and multiply your answer by 100 and say equal, it will give you your answer. But for now, I'm going to do things manual. Alpha five equals is 23. So that everybody has the values, especially those who don't know how to use their calculator and they're going to calculate manually. It will be 23 point. Seven, six, six. Eight, seven. Remember, you need to keep all the decimal. My financial calculator, I kept it at four decimals. And you need to find your alpha four, which is my mean, which is 67.4286. So you can use all the values on your calculator. And for this, I'm going to just do the answer, 23 divided by 67, multiply by 100, and I get 35.25. Remember that those who are using and this will be a percentage. Those who are using a sharp calculator, remember is that also going to take you through your steps. It 
those who are using a casio sorry a casio you also need to put your calculator to step mode I'm trying to open my other calculator. Okay. I'm unable to open it right now. So remember to put your calculator to state mode and it will say SD as well. So you will say uh, mode STA, you will find your your functions, I think it will be on button number one, zero or button number one, I'm not sure, <laughs> depending on the kind of a calculator you have, and you will press that SD for the standard deviation, and your calculator will give you a table with an X value. So remember to capture your date, the values, you will say, <clears throat> to capture your values, you will say 31 equal, and it will place it into the table. And 43 equals, 63 equals, until you capture all the values up until line number seven. Once you have all the values on line number seven, you go and you say shift because your values are hidden on button number one under the STAT on button number one. And those who are using another old version of KSU, it will be under the SVAR on button number two. So. Either you're using the one where it has the STAT, or you use the one that has S sum and S var on button number one. You will use the S var. Those who are pressing button number one, you also follow the steps. That um, you will see all the steps. Uh, all the steps. You just press the values that corresponds to all those, um, and then there will be var, and you choose that one. And that bar will give you your, your uh, values for standard deviation, the mean, and all that. And you will select the number that corresponds to it, and you will substitute into the formula and calculate. And for this, the answer will be option C. So I'm not going to take you through all the steps because my calculator now doesn't want to open. Okay. And those who are calculating manually, so that will be the standard deviation and the sum and the mean you will calculate it using the sum of your observation minus one. So it means you calculate first the mean. By finding the mean, which will be 67.43, you will say 31 minus 67.43 squared divide, uh, plus 43 minus 67.42 or 43 squared plus. 63 minus until you get to 96 minus 67.43 squared divided by 8, um, sorry, 7 minus 1. And you calculate that, take the square root, and it will give you the answer you will give you 3.7687. And that will be your standard deviation. Okay. Yeah. So you can use your calculator to save time instead of calculating manually. Okay, so uh, question six is relating to this uh, contingency table and we're looking for the incorrect question. And this will be done in question six and question seven, so we can move forward. What they did do is give you the total. Now, if you look at this contingency table, in class, we dealt with events which are numerical value and we calculated the probabilities here they give you the probabilities as soon as you see decimals you must know that this values in here are probabilities these are already probabilities calculated what they didn't calculate is your marginal probabilities so this we call them the joint probabilities so they calculated the joint probabilities, you need to find the marginal probabilities or what we call the simple probabilities. You cannot get away with this 
So you need to just make sure that you quickly calculate those probabilities and finish it up. So looking at this, it's 0.38 plus 0.15, and it will give you 0 0.53 for that. And continue and do the same thing on the other side, 0.18 plus 0.29. And this will give you 0.47. And anyone has calculated the site? It's 0 0.056 and 0 0.44. 0 and once your contingency table is complete, you can answer any probability questions that you have. So since here they give you statements, not in terms of formulas, but the nice thing about it is at the end, they also give you the probability function that you need to also be aware of. So this question, I don't even have to read what the statement says. I can just go to that. That is. So it says I need to find the probability of home and secure. This is a joint probability. Is that correct? Okay. We're looking for the correct answer. Remember that. Is yes, that no. correct? That is incorrect because the probability of home and secure is 0 0.38. Yes. So that is incorrect. Okay, number two, it's asking the probability of secure given that home. So since this is a conditional probability, remember, you would have written on the equation somewhere close by, which would have said probability of A given B is given by the probability of A and B divide by the probability of B. You would have written this somewhere on a piece of paper somewhere and you can just reference it. Take the same question that you have here, which says the probability of secure and home. You can rewrite it in terms of that. So if I see that secure is A and H is B, so I can say this is the same as the probability of secure and and home divide by the probability of home. The so way will I find the probability of secure and home? We calculate, we found it, it was 0 0.38. Mm. Divide by the probability of home. I go to home and I look for simple probability because at this zero point, point it will give me my simple probability of home, which is 0.53. Zero and if you calculate this, what do you get? 0716. 0, 0716. 0, 717, so which is 0, 0,72, which is correct. So you can three. stop right here, yes, because it's rounded. Yeah, we need to round it to two decimals. So you can stop right here, or you can continue and answer all this. So this is the probability of home, which is what we just used, and this is calculating the probability of home or secure. So depending on what kind of a question you receive in the exam, remember this might not be the, the one that you received. So to find the probability of home, you will say this is the probability of home or secure is given by the probability of home plus the probability of secure minus the probability of, of secure and home. Which you would have used the probability of A or B, which is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A. 
and B. That is the same equation that I used there, and you can check that. For home or secure, you can also do the same thing as what we did with secure in home. Okay, so that will be the found the, our answer for this question. We have been option number B because we're looking for the correct answer. Depending on the one that you have in front of you, you will know which one will be the correct one. So I'll urge you to go and do, if you haven't done your assessment online, go and do your assessment because the answers you will get or the questions you will get will not be the same as the ones that we just did now. Okay, so remember that first question relates to this one. And now I need to go get all the answers that I needed for this. So do you still remember what do we have here? Was well, zero comma zero five three and four seven zero five three and zero four seven. And here we had Five, six, and four, four. 0 0.56 and 0 0.4. So same here, they're, now here they're asking you to know your theory now. So they need to know if you do understand what independent means, what mutual exclusive means, and what a complement event means. So starting with mutual exclusive, remember mutual exclusive events cannot happen at the same time. So it means the probability of A and B will be equals to zero. This is for mutually exclusive event. For independent events, it means the probability of A given B will be the same as probability of A because it means they have no bearing on each other. Or the probability of B given A will be equals to the probability of A, or it will be the probability of A and B will be given by the probability of A times the probability of B. Remember that. And a complement event will be the probability of A will be one minus the probability or the probability of a complement will be the probability of one minus the probability of A. Or the probability of A is one minus the probability of the complement. So based on those four statements that we have there. Uh, so this is independent and this is complements. So based on those statements that we did there, let's come and answer these questions. Is the probability of home and secure or insecure, home and insecure, are they independent? So based on this information, I can use this information and check if they are they independent if they are independent then they are not independent if they are not the same so it means the probability of home and insecure which is 0 0.15 0 0.15 needs to be the same as the probability of home times the probability of secure they need to be the same. And if they are the same, then we will say they are dependent. Okay. So if this mm. statement holds, they are dependent. So what is the probability of home and probability of secure? Probability of home is 0 0.0.53 multiplied by the probability of insecure. Oh, sorry, insecure, not I not s the probability of insecure which is 0 0.44 0 
or four. If you calculate this, what do you get? So 0.2332 by is 0.23332. Therefore, they are not. So these are not dependent. Not dependent. Uh, not in sorry not independent not independent independent so this is correct we're looking for the incorrect one number two it says the probability of home and away are mutually exclusive so it means this should say home and away equals to zero are they equals to zero home and away home away are they, they are equal to zero because they cannot happen at the same time. So therefore, this is the correct, no, sorry, this is, yes, this is the correct answer, sorry. This is correct because they cannot happen at the same time, they will be equal to zero, right? Because mm. women are away. They are in the same category. Okay, now we move to the next one, which says home and secure are independent. Home and secure. Are they independent? We just did it yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We, did we did insecure. We can also do the home and secure. So the, we, you do the same. So we know the probability of home and secure. So you say the probability of home and secure should be equal to the probability of home times the probability of secure. So what is the values for home and secure? Home and secure is 0, 0.838. 0, oh, sorry, 0, 38. The probability of home is 0 0.53. The probability of secure multiplied by 0 0.56. Are they the same or not the same? So you will say 0 0.53 multiplied by 0 0.56 equals 0 0.30. Zero point three zero. Zero point three zero. So they are not independent. And this question says they are independent. So this will have been the question that we are looking for. Because it's asking for which one of these statements are incorrect. So it should have said not independent. And you can look at the probability of secure. Uh, probability of secure and insecure. Probability of secure and insecure will be equals to zero and the complement, oh sorry, they say it's not the probability but the event. Event secure and insecure, mm -hmm. they will be complement events. So that will have been the correct one because they are a complement of each other. Okay, moving to the next one. Okay, so here we're talking about probability, but what are we talking about here? So here we are in the binomial distribution probability. Okay. 
So this is the binomial distribution. So to save time, yes, that's it. to save time, never try to mm. use the formulas because you will take forever to answer all these questions using formulas. Use the table. So if you go to the binomial distribution table, remember the table looks like this. The hint is to read the statement and find out what your n is. And here our n is 20. Our n is 20. So if the n is 20, it means we're going to be going to look for the table that has n equals to 20, which will be the last table in the binomial distribution. We just rotate it. Rotate it. And there is the binomial distribution table. Remember the following as well. The values at the top, we read them with the values on the left. The values at the bottom, we read them with the values on the right, always. So these two, they go together. You read, if the, if the probability is any of, it takes up any of these values, we use the ends from the right. If the probability, of success is any of those values, we use the ends and the x's from the left. We go back to our question. Our probability of success, which is our pi, is 0, 0,35. So we know that we're going to look for our pi of 0, 0,35a. That will be our table that we're going to be using. So it means our n we'll be using the one on the left. Going back to the question, they are asking for the incorrect question. So the key hint here is the statements, the statements are important. Those are very important. So the first one, it says the probability that all 20 branches, so it means we're looking for the probability of x is equal to 20. That's what we're looking for for number A. For number B, I'm just going to write them all here. The probability that exactly 14, so we're looking for the probability that x is equal to 14. And number Uh, C, at most, 14, so it means C, we're looking for the probability that X is less than or equals to 14. Yeah, I ran out of space. I'm going to write at the top as well. The last one, last two, at least 14 and none of 20. So D, it says the probability of X greater than or equals to 14, and E says the probability that X is equals to zero, because it says none of them, so it's equals to zero. Okay, right. I'm not so we know that our probability is 0, 0,35. Our n is 20. We are on this. So to find the first one, which says the probability that x is equal to 20, it means we go to n 20, x 20, and look for, for the answer. So this should be 0, or it should be not applicable. So if we go back to our question. Actually, we should have stopped right there because it says the probability that x is equal to 20 is 0 0.35. Therefore, the incorrect answer would have been that one. But since we're doing all of them, um, so we can go and do all of them and then come and check the answers from here if they are correct. So that will be the, how you will do it on your exam as well. So the probability of X is exactly 14. 
it's equals to 40. So we go to 40. And as you can see, I cannot, you will be working online. You will not be able to read all these values like this. So you can start counting them until 14, starting at zero. Um, this will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 18, 14. Zero comma one, zero comma zero zero one two. That will be the probability of equals to fourteen. The probability of x less than or equals to fourteen. It means I must add all these values up. Therefore, I can also say it's one minus the probability that x is greater than fourteen which means I must just add only those two values that I have, which is the probability of one minus the probability of, since I cannot do that, one minus the probability of X is equals to 15, which is 0 0.0003, yeah. plus the probability that X is 15, uh, 15, 16, which is 0, 0,000. This is 1 minus 0, 0,003, which is 0, 0,9997. That is the probability of X less than. Otherwise, if you have time, you can add all of them, right? You don't have the luxury to do that. So take shortcuts. The probability of X greater than 14, which will be greater than 14, it means including from here going down. So it means we go and say 0, 0,0012 plus 0, 0,0003 plus 0, 0,0000, which is 0, 0,0. 0, 1, 5. The probability that x is equal to 0 will be 0, 0,0002 because it will be just that one probability there. So that's how you will answer the question in the exam. But remember, if they are looking for the incorrect one and you find the incorrect one, you don't have to go through all the steps. I'm just showing you on the table how you can find all these probabilities. As you can see, we find all of them, which wow. was not easy, but we found all of those probabilities. <laughs> okay. And this is another question. But this, remember you get one question per section. So this is a Poisson distribution. So if you read the question, you will notice that it has some hints as well that tells you what you're looking at. So this is a Poisson and it says, Food traffic describes the number of uh, customers entering a location of interest. Upon moving to level four of the national lockdown, uh, food traffic at the mall esti uh, was estimated to be 20 customers per minute. Since they used what we call estimation, so that will be your, your lambda is equal to 20 per minute. Assume the traffic follows a poison. What will be the probability that, so here we find the probability x is equal to 90. <coughs> What will be the probability that the five customers at a given point enters? The probability that X is equal to 35. 
what will be the variance which is our lambda what is your lambda what is the probability that at most 35 customers will enter what will be the probability that x less than or equals to 35 will enter what is the mean the mean is your expected baby we're looking for in the incorrect answer. So we can automatically from using that, the two questions that we can eliminate that are correct. We know that the average is 20. So this is correct. We know that a variance is lambda, which is correct. So we need to calculate the probabilities. So we need to go to the Poisson table. Need to rotate. And here on the point zone, let's hope they gave us up until 20 because they gave us the average of 20. And there we go. Our lambda, 20. That's what we found. An estimate is 20. What will be the probability of 19? Uh, these are also 20, so all of them are lambda 20. So we just need to find the one that says 90. X is 90, 90, 0 0.088. That will be our probability of 90 which is that, which is correct. Now we need to find the probability that it equals to 35. So you go find 35, where is 35? It's 0, 0,007. 0, 0,007. That is right. We're looking for the incorrect one automatically because all the statements are correct. I can just come here and say this is the incorrect one. Or you can go ahead and calculate it. Why? Because we're looking for the probability that X, sorry, so to save you time in the exam, probability that X is less than 35, so it's the probability that X is less than 35, will be given by 1 minus the probability that X is greater than, sorry, it's greater than 35. So it means you're going to add all this and subtract them from one. So this is six, seven, eight. One minus zero point zero 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 eight. And if you calculate that, because if I add all of this, they will give me zero comma zero zero eight. One minus point zero zero eight. Zero point nine 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 two, which is not the correct one. So, but in the exam, you will save more time because you don't have to go and do all these calculations to validate your answer because if all these other statements are incorrect, then it means that one will be are correct. That will be the incorrect one. But also based on your assessment that you will get, you need to make sure that you do the right one. So I will still urge you, those who haven't done this online, go and try and see if you can answer those questions online because your questions might not be the same as what we just did right now. Okay. The next question which is the second last one, I think. It talks to the 
sampling distribution. Uh, sorry, normal distribution. Oh, why am I saying sampling distribution? This is a normal distribution question. They give you the mean, they give you the standard deviation. They ask you to find the probability, so therefore it means you need to go find the probability that at least, so it will be greater than or equals to 2460. So now, going back to the normal distribution, remember, we will use the table. The probability of Z less than A is the value we find on the table. So this will be the table value. The probability of Z greater than A, so say one minus the value we find on the table. The probability of between It will be the probability of Z less than B minus the probability of Z less than A, which will mean the value we find on the table for B minus the value we find on the table for A. So this is at least. So at least means greater than. So we are going to say one minus the value we find on the table. One minus the probability of Z less than the x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which is the formula for our z distribution. So mm. 1 minus the probability of z less than our x is what is given in the question, which is 2460 minus our mean is always going to be given in the statement, which is 3730 divided by our standard deviation of 1000. 1 minus the probability of z less than. Okay, and let me know what you find. Minus 3, minus 1, 3, 0, 0. Minus 1, 3, 0, 0. 0, 0. So remember yes. this, we're going to the, t, to the z table, we only move to this map. So you can just see this map. So it's minus 1,3. So we need to take this minus 1,3 and go to the Z table. We will go to the Z table. And go to the negative side of the table. And on the negative side of the table, we're going to look for Minus, minus 1.3 on the three. side and 0 at the top. So that is 0 at the top and minus 1.3. That will be the answer. 0, 0,0968. And you come here, you say 1 minus 0, 0,0968. I hope I. 968. And you say 1 minus 0 0.0968 equals, and that will give you your answer. Unless somebody gave me the wrong answer for minus 1.3. It must be 1.27. 1.27. Yeah. Yeah, it was minus 1.27. Yeah. Minus. So please make sure that you do Seven. Do not round off quickly. Remember when you do the normal distribution table, you're always going to use two decimals. Uh, so we need to go back. So the answer was not that. It was 1.27 minus 1.27. One so we come here. We look for minus 1.2, and that will be the answer, which is 0 0.1020. So yeah, 0 0.1020.
And the answer is 0 0.8980, yes. so it's just that one. So some of you might go, uh, have the question here saying, uh, at most, some of you might get the one that says equal, some of you might not equal. So some of you might get the one that says between. So you need to know how to apply when you go get the, the values on the table. And that's why I did that way. <coughs> okay. And this is also a normal distribution question. It says, suppose your value of your x, your z value, if I go find the probability, we find it as 0 0.4, 0 0.04. Remember also the probability of Z less than a value A. So if our Z value A is Z in this instance, we say it is the table value. So if we know that that is the table value, therefore it means the table value contains 0, 0, uh, 0, 0,400. So can we go and find the probability of Z and find that value that it should be? So to do that, we go to the table. So for this one, you just come here to the table. We're going to look for the Z value. So we come here, we look for 0, 0,4. So we go, this is 0, 0,00, go down and look for 0, 0,4. So yeah, 0, 0,4, 0, 0,4, 0, 0,4, 1, and you can go to 0, 0,3. Nine seven and zero comma four zero. So it is one two three zero comma two minus zero comma two. So at least at most equal to. It's minus zero comma. So we can we can always do it that way. Uh, 0, 0,2, we can use this one and go up, up, up. It's 0, uh, 0, 0,25. 0,225. Minus, minus 0, 0,25. So let's look for minus 0, 0,2 and then right. this one they say minus 0, 0,225. 255. No comma 8, no comma 4. Mm. 